I've been waiting to make this video. I was waiting for the new update where they added the mirror to the game in, in your whatever your camp. You can go in and look in the mirror and change your appearance. Now you can't change your body type or your race, but you can change your appearance. So that's why a lot of these mods are gonna be really cool. One of the main reasons I use these mods is because this is what my character would be looking like in the late game. That's it, that's my character running around. And if you don't care and you like, hey, that's pretty cool, I like it, then you do you, by all means. But that's not how I like to, to play. She promised me a bit of milk. Do you see any milk, do you? Nor do I, disgraceful. All right, so this is cool if you just want some more natural skin tones. And I have not installed this one myself, but, and, and it's new. But it's really cool because a lot of these skin tones do have a very natural quality to them. If you don't want just the crazy modern D&D purple green skin, whatever. Now we're going to talk hair. What I would recommend doing with these is just finding the uh, hair mod that has the hairstyle that you want and installing that one. You don't need to install all the hair, you know, all the different hairstyles. Honey's hair kitchen. You know, I like this one. It's that one's pretty cool, but it, it's all up to you. Find the one you like. These uh, this is this is showcasing some of the faces that this person made as well. Some of these are pretty cool as well. And the last one, there's not too many in here, but if you like more of the anime style like that one, or if you like really long hairs, this one has a few of those options. Where's the where's the shot of the, there we go, the really long hair, really long hair. Crystal Gale looking stuff right there. If you want some more hair colors, well, this is a mod for you. I love the, the reds and oranges and auburns and all that stuff that come with this one. But we have many, I feel like a lot of these should have been in the vanilla game, but it would have been, it'd have been too many colors. But there's some really, really cool hair colors. I feel like I'm walking around Seattle right now or Portland. But this is my favorite hair mod out of all of them because it has ridiculous stuff. Look at this 80s monstrosity. And then since we installed the other mod with all of the different colors. So here's your regular colors up here on the top, right? And then you'll see these, they have the prefix ASTRL for Astral. So there we go. And I love some of the purples. They're ridiculous. That's... It's actually really ridiculous looking. I love this one because it, it's got the physics, spiky, it's great. I mean, these are all subjective. So there's not as many hairs with this pack as there are with Tav's hair salon. So take a look at these. There's so many of these Tav's hair pack. You've got some huge hairdos. You kind of have to click and go through each one because there's not a thumbnail for, for these. If you take the time and like go through it, I'm sure you'll find one you really like. Hmm, purple shadow heart style. Floppy flop. <laughs> This is um, how I actually play my game. I've got 200 hours in the game, and 150 hours is this. <laughs> what am I doing? There, look at that. <laughs> it clips through your armor, but it's so ridiculous, it's almost worth it. If you're not wearing something with big shoulder things, you know, you're wearing a different set of armor, this might be fun. And then, the other um, hairs that I like, I mean, Tavs has a lot. A lot. I wish you could just change all the NPCs to these things as well. Look at that one. All right, once we get down to the, the final one, you'll see the names just change to regular names. There we go. And that's when the Tav's hair pack is over. The ones that just have names, those are Honey's Hair Kitchen. Anyway, I like these a lot. Let me just scroll in. There's something about them, like I said, they look a little tougher, a little more goth, and there's some good ones in here as well. So go through, find your favorite hair mod. You don't have to keep all the hair mods. I recommend just finding your favorite one. There we go, that's pretty cool. Wait a second. If we make this blonde, all right, I need to speak to your manager immediately. This is when Shadowheart lived in the 80s and 90s and, and still complained. So that's the hair mods. Now all those different hair colors again, all right here. And Mistress Dorenbold still drags me hither and thither. Now we're going to get into clothing and we're going to talk about my favorite clothing mod and I'm going to teach you how this works so that you'll know how a lot of these clothing mods work. Now this one, uh, this is the not safe for work version, so it's going to be hard to show a lot of this on the screen. But they've gone through and they've taken a lot of the outfits in the game. They've taken pieces from here and there, from bits and pieces from there. Taken some of the underwear, mixed it with some of the armor, and just done some crazy things. But they've put together hundreds of different individual pieces of armor, accessories, robes, whatever. And it's in one huge package. So I like the not safe for work version for a couple different reasons because it breaks up a lot of the different armor and I don't run around with my parts out. I just I think that that's a bit too skanky for me. That's a bit weird having your characters run around with their parts just flopping around. And this, this mod will give you the option to do that. Now there's a couple different ways you can install this and I highly recommend doing it the second way. I'll tell you the first way first, you just download the mod and when you install it, these, clo these clothes and these armor sets, they go onto the left side 
which is where all your armor goes. So if you're wearing armor that has certain attributes and specs, this will override it. There's a better way to do this, uh, and it allows you to have your armor and your aesthetic. This is camp clothing. Now what this does is it makes the, the basket full of equipment stuff, all this stuff here, it translates it over to your camp clothing slot. So you have on the left of your character, you have all your, your armor and all that stuff, and that's the stuff that matters for when you're playing the game. On the right, that's your camp clothing. That's how you look, and you can toggle that at any time. So you can be wearing your armor, but your character can look the way you've set it up with all your camp clothing. So you can wear all of this stuff, get the benefits of your armor, but this governs the aesthetic of your character. Now, one other thing is inside here, there's a bunch of underwear and stuff that you'll see in the game. You know, the, when you first get it, the underwear goes into your just regular clothing slot. So that'll be all you can wear. And that's not really my thing. If it's your thing, then fine, you just wanna wear underwear everywhere. You do you, that's great, that's great. But what I usually like to do is also add on this. It's the basket full equipment underwear slot. And it makes all the different underwears go to the underwear slot. Now this is cool because like I was talking about earlier, you can put on a pair of pants or something from just the basket full of equipment and then you can also put on underwear. Now why should I do that? Well I don't want to only be wearing underwear. Now this can cause some different conflicts and issues because sometimes your clothing and, and whatever will clip through with your underwear. And that's what I like about the not safe for work versions is because you have options that don't cover all your parts. So that way you can mix and match without a lot of clipping. For instance, so this would just be, normally it would be just topless, but now that I can put it here in my underwear slot, I'm wearing that, say I wanna wear a dress. So now I'm wearing a dress and that's over over the top, but you can see the, uh, the strappies underneath. So this dress is the wrong color, I'm afraid, because it, you know, you can see the clipping, see right there where like, sometimes the underwear will go through. Well, that's something you're gonna have to, you know, adjust or work with or figure out. But you know, one of the things that I think really works is if we just get our, our inks out and I'm gonna dye this emerald green my favorite or it's emerald emerald graves yes there we go and now it's not really apparent at all where it's where it's clipping through so that looks really cool let's say i want to try a different set of underwear or whatever that'll go underneath this this one there we go put that on now i've got the strap down the middle looks pretty cool got the strap in the back and it's perfectly working so that it's actually looks like it's underneath my outfit now, if I were to wear something that was safe for work, you can see there it creates an issue where it's kind of, you know, sticking through your clothing and whatnot. So, yeah. As you can see, I've got the camp clothing on a lot of the people here. There's Jahira. I want to mention one, one thing real quick. So here's Karlak. Now, notice that she is wearing a pair of the, um, this is the underwear that goes with the Dragonborn. And as you can see, the underwear with the Dragonborn, this is actually from in-game. You find this in Act 3, and you, think you might be able to find it somewhere else. Um, but this one, as you can see on the back, it has like a little leather that goes above the tail because she's a tiefling. And that's something that the developers had to do. They made the different outfits and underwear um, for each different race, which is a lot of work. So here's the one that came with the basket equipment mod. It's shaped for the big girls, which is what Carlac would be. But as you can see on the back, it's not specifically made for the tiefling because that requires a lot more work. So making each one of these things for each um, different you know character or each different class is not something that's been done well hold the line you best believe now something else that's compatible with this and takes it a step farther and gives you just some different options and that is the modular equipment it breaks up a lot of the equipment that they have in the game so you have all these different options here and you can put them on individually as needed there's two different combinations but a lot of this stuff when you have the game you just pick one thing and it's like the whole outfit all together Whereas this one just breaks it down. And I really like that. The way you can like really customize your look. So this one's cool as well. And they all work very well with different dyes. So let's talk about some ways to dye your clothing. I wouldn't be here tonight. Except my wife ran off with a cambium. That's right. I got fiend zone. <laughs> with the basket of equipment, there are a bunch of dyes in there. And I really use the black dyes a lot. There's different types of black dye. Black dye with... You know, bronze metal, black dye with gold metal, black dye with black metal. Those are all great. They work really well and they're infinite use. But the extra dyes for the fashionable folk of Faerun, I love these dyes. <laughs> really, really good dyes. Is that they've done a very good job of putting together different mixes of colors that, that look well, to, well together, you know. My favorite one 
is the Emerald Graves die. Got this beautiful dark green emerald color and uh, sort of a dark black that goes around it. It looks beautiful with some of the patterns that you get in the game. So highly recommend these dies. If I was only going to have one set of dies in my game, I would throw this in there. And it's available at a few different, um, a few different places in the game. You can also get it by summoning the tutorial chest. And I'll show you how to do that toward the end of the video. And then if you wanted even more dies, these are good. This is my second choice. Pretty good. The last thing, this is completely up to you. If you want to just be able to use all the dies over and over and over again, you can get everybody dies. Unlimited dying. Just let you use them forever. Oh. Infernos contractos te vocamos. A lot of these mods require you to get the different items out of the tutorial chest, the cartilaginous chest that's on the illithid vessel that crashes in the beginning of the game, but that chest is not around in later parts of the game, so you'll need to summon it. And there is a mod that allows you to summon the uh, tutorial chest, so that way you can just put it in your inventory and then throw it in your camp uh, stuff so it's always there. I generally think that this is the better option. All right, so this is the mod manager. Now, if you need the script extender, you can just come up here to tools and click on download and extract the script extender and that's all you need. So just drag and drop the zip file right over here. I'll give you a little exclamation mark, but don't worry about it too much. Now I'm gonna drag and drop it over here to the bottom. Now when it's done over here and your stuff's all in the right order, you have to click on export. All right, so even if you try to play, it's like, hey, it requires the script extender. It's smart enough to know. So just come up here at the tools and click on download and extract the script extender. Hit yes. There we go. See a little script extender thing? That means everything's ready to go. Be sure to click on export there. There. All right, so in order to summon that chest, you need to get somewhere where no one can see you and crouch. And once you crouch, this is gonna appear, summon tutorial chest. So click on that, you're doing the spell, click it again, and now you're gonna, it's, it's in your inventory. It's way too heavy though. Well, not, not crazy, but open that up. Just highlight everything in there by control or shift clicking, right click, send it to camp. Now when you go back to camp, you can go over here to your, your chest, wherever that is, and open it up. I've got some stupid Sussur flowers in there. All right, all the way down at the bottom is where it should be. And there's all the stuff we just sent there. There's our die bundle. You can right click and do open. I like to drag these around. There's all of our dies. And then we have our modular equipment. And this will tell you what slot it goes into. I really like the modular equipment that goes into, well, there you have the underwear slot right here. Whoops. If you double click it, it'll pick it up. Don't do that. Right click and open all of these. There we go. This is our underwear stuff. And in order to see it all, I like to keep this open and just kind of like drag and drop it onto my character. There we go. I'll show you what it looks like. Take off the actual clothes. And if you don't like it, you can just drag and drop it back. See what this one looks like. So you can take a look at all of those that way. If you're a little bit lost and you're like, I don't really know how to install all these Baldur's Gate 3 mods, if you just search for Baldur's Gate 3 mod tutorial, the first thing that comes up should be my video. Otherwise, it'll be linked right in the top of the description. But this video is an absolutely uh, necessary thing for you to watch. It's 20 minutes, you're gonna be playing the game for hundreds of hours. So I think 20 minutes is a pretty fair trade-off to understand you know, what's going on behind the scenes. I'll teach you how the modding actually works. So that way, if something breaks, you'll understand what have been going on behind the scenes. We'll talk about updating mods. I'll show you how to use the mod uh, manager. And we're also gonna show you how to install camera mods that are outside of the mod manager. And the last thing I'll do is just show you how to drag and drop things straight into the folder um, things that don't use the mod manager, but just do basic texture replacements and stuff. So make sure you watch that video. The link is in the description, but then you'll understand what's going on with all this modding we're doing here. Now, when you're modding, make sure you make a save before you do any of this stuff. Make a real save, not a quick save, make like a real save. That way, if anything goes wrong, you can just revert back to that save. Also, whenever you start installing mods, the next time you launch your game, it's going to pop up and say like, could not build a complete story or something's wrong you know if there's like a warning message just click okay that's it i mean a lot of people are scared and they go and they immediately uninstall all their mods and they're like oh no it's broken i wish that they had worded that better and said like hey we've detected that you're running mods do it at your own risk click yes to continue that would have been much better than saying like uh, you know a story could not be built i've been running so many of these mods you just ignore that the first time save your game go ahead play and it works 
So I've got about 250 hours in and it's crashed like a couple times, but that's not bad for a couple hundred, you know, a couple hundred hours. So yeah. The last thing I'll mention is this is my uh, reshade that I use when I'm playing the game. And so everything you've been seeing in the game has all been using this reshade. I do like a bit of film grain, so you, you can notice it more in darker scenarios. But this is my reshade if you want to have your game uh, look like this. This is before and after. Let's uh, show you a little before and after. That's before and that's after. I feel like it adds a little bit of clarity, a little bit of focus, and a little bit of a, I don't know, maybe cinematic quality before, after. And then you can also turn on depth of field if you want to do like a photo. So anyway, that's that. Let me know what you think of everything in this video. I hope you're having a lot of fun playing Baldur's Gate 3. It's probably one of my games of the decade right now. Kind of curious to know how you think of it. You know, is it your game of the decade? Anyway, I'm going to go play it again right now. Anyway, the last thing I want to say is like um, this channel, I'm not taking any big you know, sponsorship deals or anything like that, but we do make hardware. And if you like awesome gaming mice that kind of feel like the old Microsoft and Telemouse, I went to uh, Asia, many different places over there to pick these parts out and put this together. It's got a flawless 3310 uh, sensor on the inside. I love this mouse. But yeah, 30% off using the coupon code HALLOWEENERDOG until after Halloween. You get good luck spelling that. But we've got that mouse and a controller. If you want a controller with the best thumbsticks on the market, guaranteed or I'll eat a sandwich. I'm gonna eat a sandwich anyway. Cheers, everybody.